Welcome to After Five Radio, your favorite online radio station showcasing Zimbabweans in the diaspora. I am your host, aka the hype lady, Miss Tando Amy, coming to you live all the way from Canada. And joining me today is the best selling author of a book entitled Turning Tables, Alistair Kawira. <laughs> Um, so those who've had um, the opportunity to read Turning Tables, you already know the juicy drama and the novel, I mean, the juicy drama that the novel carries at the same time, the real life issues it tackles. And we shall get into it. But before we do that, uh, please help me welcome the talented author, Alice Takawira. Welcome, Miss Alice Takawira. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. I definitely appreciate being on this platform. I am happy to talk about my book to my fellow Zimbabweans and everybody around the world. It is actually a pleasure and truly an honor to um, have you right here on After Five Radio. And it's been a long time coming. But then at the same time, I had to first enjoy reading the book and finish it. Yes. <laughs> but it is quite um exciting to have such talented people come up with novels rather than memoirs or you know saying life issues kind of my self-help books and stuff like that because that's what's out there right now right and seeing you're writing a novel I'm like okay mills and boons hello no, that is so awesome. So just to kick off the interview, mind um, bringing our listeners up to speed with your upbringing and a little bit about your background. Who is Alice and what she's all about? Hi, everyone. My name is Alice Takawira. And I will begin by telling you that my first name is Rudo. I am Rudo Alice Takawira. And I chose to use Alice as my pen name or my author name because it's a middle name that I've had, that I have, but mm -hmm. have never used it. Never used oh it any of it. So I figured this would be a nice opportunity to um, separate the author from the Rudo that everybody knows. So right. I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Bulawayo. I, um, I am the fourth out of five girls raised by a phenomenal woman, may she rest in peace. And um, I graduated from the University of Zimbabwe with a bachelor's in physical therapy, physiotherapy, mm -hmm. and uh, moved to London where I worked as a physiotherapy, then later moved to America to study for a master's in public health in Atlanta. And I currently live in Atlanta with my husband and two kids. And I am a physical therapist. That's what I do for a living. And now an author. Now an author. And then there's going to be more because people are actually being serial entrepreneurs out there. So I believe there's more that we're going to be hearing in today's interview. And it is actually so exciting um, to, to, to see the author side of you, especially coming from, you know, well, would we say physio, phys, physiotherapy sciences? Will that fall under sciences? And then getting into arts. And I'm like, okay, talk about talent. And then also, when I'm on a finance business, and you're like, hey, okay, all rounder. <laughs> well, uh, yes, yeah, so I have, uh, I'm a, as I, I've always loved the sciences and you know in Zimbabwe if you were very good at sciences if you knew your math biology physics and chemistry you were automatically booked to go to medical school or just the pharmacy route or the whatever science route right mm -hmm. and if you were in the history and uh, arts direction you went another way maybe a lawyer maybe an accountant it was always very cut clean right mm -hmm. you did the thing for that very mm -hmm. traditional career path and I will tell you that I, and I'm not blowing my own horn here, I feel like I was an all-rounder because I love science. I was a curious child yeah. and I even thought I'd do medicine at some point. I would, you know, I was always in the sciences, but guess what? I equally loved the arts. I loved oh. writing. I loved all things arts and I started writing my own books when I was 13 years old. So I was in both spaces, but um, of course, I followed the arts, the sciences as a career path. And then now I guess I am doing the arts thingy 
as my right. hobby and you know so being a physiotherapy was actually your choice correct the fact that you yes. love the arts okay yes anyway yes I you're your type it's and yeah you are your type it's I was straight to the point <laughs> gaga ga, ga. because because yes. <laughs> we really know that you know our parents always want us to be doctors nurses especially going oh, overseas my choice I right. love the sciences. I, mm-hmm. I'll tell you, when I was in first grade, I mm-hmm. won for being, I guess, the, the best student in the class in first grade. And the first book I won was a little book called The Little Doctor. Oh, nice. And from that time, I was very, I wasn't your classic nerd. And yeah. I am not a nerd by any means. But yeah. I always had my head in a book, school nice. book or whatever, fiction. Mm-hmm. And I was always that girl so I did choose to do a, a physical therapy I chose my career I love what I do I enjoy what I do but I also really love to write to write <laughs> hey but happy there now I'm in a go anyway <laughs> so um I enjoy asking um most authors the field of study which you've already explained right now that you you know you're a physiotherapist by profession and all that fun stuff. So um, what made you choose to write now? In your, like, now you're married, you have two kids, My right? Yes. In your 40s. <laughs> by the way, I turned to you yesterday. <laughs> we like that. We like that. We like that. Happy birthday. Thank you. Awesome. Um, why now? Very mm-hmm. good question. Um, I can't tell you for a fact why now, but I can tell you that the bug to write has always been there. I just never had an opportunity to actually sit down and nurture it. I've written a few things over the years. Like I would type a story in my, on my laptop and then I'd give a friend and say, Hey, what do you think? And, Oh, we like it. And I'd die it off at like th- chapter three or chapter four and never mm-hmm. to be seen again, you know? Sometimes I'd have ideas in my head, I'd scribble them down and think, okay, I'll do this. And I just never got around to doing it because of time. I was a student at one point, then trying to get a job, then a wife and a mother and life simply just happened, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess maybe three years ago, um, it came back to bite me. And this time it was pretty strong. Like I just had this story in my head. I kid you not, I would be driving to work or in the shower and ideas would be literally flowing in my head and mm-hmm. I had to write it down. Sometimes I'd wake up in, and, and, and be like, I had this thing that I was thinking about all night and I even dreamt stuff. Like, it was like, this is becoming crazy. Like I'd oh, wake wow. up with <clears throat> idea, wake up in the morning and be like, okay, that's what I need to do. I need to mm-hmm. get a character like this and do da 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 da. And then I, I started typing it. I just started writing it all down. And I think the stars were aligned because I also happened to have a very, very supportive husband who then said to me, if you want to do it and take it seriously, then you better set aside time for it and take it seriously. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what I did. So it took a conscious decision to set aside time for it mm-hmm. to get to where I am right now. So didn't, didn't the kids feel kind of okay mom you're not giving us attention you know like where's that like time if I should put it that way because of course you were still a mother you were still being a wife but then at the same time being told good okay just focus on this I got you right the times you probably had to say kids not now babies (laughs) I have a cheeky set of kids I got two kids right do you uh, see yourself in Um, uh, yeah, I think I do. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I just thought I should ask. They'll say stuff like, "When's that book gonna be done?" Anyway, you know, stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, I still had enough. I still had time for my kids. I did everything <clears> that I would have done otherwise, because I set aside time that did. I basically set aside time around my everyday life, so nothing else changed. Okay. Um, so for example, I cut out my working hours. So now I could drop my kids off at school. And whilst they're in school, I'm out here doing lots of research. I had to do a lot of research, like mm-hmm. publishing 101, marketing 101, 
writing 101 like it's mm -hmm. a lot besides the actual writing of the book mm -hmm. there was a lot of behind the scenes um that i had to learn my and, and and teach myself and a lot of resources online right so it's when the kids are in school so i'm not taking anything from anyone it's just i literally am not working eight hours anymore i'm just mm -hmm. working four hours okay so drop the kids off and work and mm -hmm. then when i pick them up forget the book we're back to running around we go to swimming lessons tennis mm -hmm. piano whatever they need we come mm -hmm. home they have dinner we do whatever we do our homework just as normal and then when the kids are sleeping back so when everyone's home. sleeping i pull up my laptop so I've, i haven't taken anything out of my regular schedule i've just mm. literally worked around it so everybody gets their share of mommy daddy gets mommy kids get mommy and my book gets written so yeah yes that just reminds me of when you mentioned the whole research studying putting trying to figure things out and it's a self-published book in case people didn't know it's a self-published book so she she did her due diligence to to do her you know uh, to get it all done and have her book published and it, it just reminded me not too long ago um somebody was helping me with my lines and they're like how come there's only there's three characters you know how in english proper english it's alice amanda and and god right you put the end but then when you're actually on the script writing it's just alice amanda god there's no end there's no whatever. so it's something too that i had to learn I had to do research what is how to script write and whatever when i started writing as well, getting back into writing as well um so i totally get what you mean and when you love are passionate about what you love dude you'll do anything and it will be nothing it will be kundamangon is like oh my gosh how do you comprehend how do you get time how do you do right it's fun for me it's fun. I'll tell you, it felt like it was my hobby mm. a hobby too mm. because you know i, I i'm self published so i had to do everything like designing the book cover I had to do that myself mm. finding the editors finding the right editors the right mm. type of editor so you first have to research what you need mm. before you even know that you need it mm. and then you find out what it is you need how do you find out where to find it and who's going to do it and mm. oh my gosh it's a lot but a lot. it was fun it was a learning experience i feel like i learned a new set of skills yeah you know that i i didn't have i was using a part of my brain that i hadn't used in a very very long time and it was so so much fun for me and so mm. rewarding in the end so i am i yeah i definitely had a good time doing it we like that so now into uh, turning tables uh, and by the way it ends with you don't know what you got until it's gone baby <laughs> it writes <laughs> and then people like us who love love stories we were right on it we were so on it um first of all what inspired you to come up with the title before let's start with was it the title that came first or was it the contents that came first which brought about the title or how did you come up with that title like it was captivating for some of us like i'm sorry to me i was like on it <laughs> you know it you know it right well yeah. for me it was the the title was influenced by the story i wrote okay. the story first and then i developed the title Mm. I do have a title for it as I wrote so I had to come up with a way to save it on my computer and I had a whole other name for it mm. um until I wrote a certain line I wish I could find it jeez I should know my book better shouldn't I I There's know right line where a character says and now the tables have turned <laughs> and we spoke about it in the in the thing you um when we had the 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 book club um the discussion right and somebody literally pointed it out I was like yo i had an yeah. on the page that was my name say her name is rudo now she right. she person <laughs> so she had highlighted everything and she said Imagine. It, was it was a day yeah. and it at a point in his life where he's realizing that he's going back on something that he thought he had mm. forgot whatever and he says and now the tables had turned Yeah. and i was like oh 
that's a good title because the tables are turning for everybody. The tables mm -hmm. turn for Maita, the tables turn for Chris, and the tables turn for Ade. So it, it, they're literally turning tables in this book. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came to that. And then I'll tell you something really interesting. I also, I love Adele like everybody does. And one of her songs, Turning Tables, I think it was from 19, album 19, or is it 30? One of, not 30, 21 or 19, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And she writes about turning tables, right? It's called turning tables. Yeah, yeah. And when yeah. I listened to the lyrics, mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, this is any one of my characters yeah. singing this song because they right. all go through that heartache. Oh they yeah. They all go through the tables she's singing about. I just felt like. Although I don't know about Chris, though. Oh, except Chris. <laughs> <laughs> maybe right? maybe book two will hear his heartache. If it, if there is ever a book two, Chris will be telling us how his heart was broken, right? Right. Spoilers, doing spoilers here. How are we doing yeah. this? I need. To well, we can. We may as well because guess what? These are what we call exclusives, my dear. This is what we oh, want, oh, which is oh, a good oh. thing. And oh. remember, the last time we we're talking about it, we're like, "Gosh, I hope you write another one." You're like, "Well, it depends if it comes." And writing, writing is about inspiration, right? Writing is about what's around you, what inspires you, and if you're in it, you're in it. If you're not you're absolutely not in it right as in as in that present moment really so <laughs> i'm excited for book two i am so ready and you know what i do now because your book on my um ipad it had about four four thousand some which was about 400 pages if i should put it that way is it uh, it's about 300 and some change right so but but then i think on my ipad because of the font so, and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it kind of came off as like four, 400, whatever. So now what I do each time I try and read a book, I check out if it gets to 400. If it's not, I'm like, this is tiny. I can do this. You know, <laughs> because sometimes because when because your, your, your book literally got me hooked to the point you go to when I couldn't finish it. I knew good, I needed to go to the gym. After I go to the gym, I need to get on it. I need to get on it because I left it on a juicy part. I want to sleep. I need to sleep. But okay, how about if I hear what Chris said? Okay, how about if... Because at first I was Tim Chris. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I know, right? So was I. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, like, I like Chris. He's a nice guy until, you know. Until, yeah, and you think. But anyway, let's dive right inside on the real life issues. Tackling real life issues, right? Talk about stereotypical situations right like right now your book has interracial dating number one what gave you the courage to write that without offending any particular culture or ethnicity or what have you because when you think about it some people could have been I don't know with your feedback actually we'll talk about your feedback too what kind of feedback yeah. you got the criticism that you got constructive be it terrible good whatever you name it Courage. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, I, I tell everybody the book was inspired by some of my own experiences. Mm -hmm. People, Which is, I actually thought you were Maita, but anyway. Everybody thinks I'm Maita, by the way. Those that know me, my own sisters, and everybody's like, hmm, there's a little bit of my, yes, there is a little bit of Maita in me. But yeah. I would say, and I'll tell you why, mm -hmm. because I wanted it to be as authentic as I could. I wanted the character of Maita to be so realistic. Mm. People wouldn't be like, oh, this is fiction. Mm. It's fiction, but it feels and reads like a true story, right? It does. That's it the does. feedback I'm getting. So I'm getting a lot of, this feels like it's a true story. Mm. And it's because um, I used real life experiences of what I've observed, what I've read, seen, heard, and what I've experienced as well. Mm. But I fictionalized the characters i created the dialogue I, I i mean i was in people's heads the whole time i was writing so i had to be in chris's head and ade's head and maita so i had to make up a lot of stuff about what do i think someone would react in this instance right mm. so when you speak about the racial stuff was i afraid i'd offend anyone no not necessarily because i was writing from a place of truth right that stuff happened to other people Mm -hmm. some of it happened to me mm -hmm. i have dated a white uh <clears throat> male before it mm -hmm. wasn't a, he wasn't racist do not get me wrong he mm -hmm. was not racist at all but i of course like i said i fictionalized stuff but 
those conversations I've heard, those situations I've heard, people have talked, you know, in private corners, when people are not talking, they'll say, oh, this and this happened and to this person and that person. So I've seen it happen, I've heard it happen. And I think, you know, at some point it's someone's truth, you know, mm -hmm. it may make someone uncomfortable, but that's the real world. This mm -hmm. world is pretty uncomfortable right now, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes maybe facing it, putting it out there and having a dialogue is what we need to do, right? Mm -hmm. So no, I wasn't, um, I don't think I offended anyone in any way. Chris is a white guy. He does not represent all white men. Ade is a Nigerian male. He does not represent all Nigerians and neither does Mayita represent all Zimbabweans because mm -hmm. Mayita was pretty unlikable too, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people- Oh yeah, a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, she's so entitled, she's so this. I'm like, yo, it sounded like Mayita was the last born guy. Give a cut us some slack. No, Look at Mayita Tima Braxton. <laughs> Look at Tama Braxton. Not everybody likes Tama. I love Tama, right? Because she just speaks the truth. She is who she is, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I see that kind of, see, that's the thing. For mm. me, like, say, and, uh, you know, nothing to offend anyone, like, with mm. Tamer, yeah, it crosses lines at some point. It's like, mm. it becomes, you go from being nice to being unlikable and being mm. really unlikable, you know. Um, and Maita is unlikable to some people, right? So does she represent every Zimbabwean girl out there? No, no she doesn't, no. you know. So it's fiction. So that's the first thing. And it speaks of what is happening around the world to mm. some people. And it's somebody's story. Mm. And the fact <clears throat> is, the world has some pretty uncomfortable things going on around us everywhere. And we may not want to talk about it, but why are we not talking about it? Let's talk about it. That's you know? it. So uh, if I offended anyone, it was not my intention. In fact, I wanted more dialogue. Right. That's what I want. That's what I'm getting. So when you speak of feedback, I have not gotten any negative feedback in terms of the, uh, the dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not enough people have read it to where you get a lot of different interpretations, right? But most of the people who've given me feedback, the reviews that I've read, and I have not influenced anyone's opinion of review or feedback, everybody is happy to see some of these things being talked about mm. and they say it's relatable people can mm. relate at different levels and it's a breath of fresh air as one uh, reader said to just see it from the lens of a different person from the from the black african girl's lens this is what happens to us so we have every right to speak about how we feel and what we feel right and that that that's so phenomenal and talk about um like you said feedback wasn't as bad at all right but then um is there a moment that you, you you like when you're opening your like your socials or the first time begin the first time because remember the first time you were so nervous you're like I don't know how this is gonna be and whatever and when I was telling you that it's good it's good you're like I don't know like I was so afraid that it would how it would turn out and stuff like that I'm like dude this is like so good right and I loved it um but then was there a moment like when you're checking your feedback if I should say yeah checking your feedback that you were actually nervous to a certain degree to say okay until of course now you're kind of getting used to it because you know you constantly check and whatever and at least you've seen majority of it uh, well all of it is, so far is good right at the moments where you're like oh. yeah. <laughs> um i'll tell you the very first review i ever got review right. number one right. on day one publishing my book was published may 5th all right and so for those so um, when you write a book, you send out what we call advanced copies, right? They're called ARCs, advanced reader copies. These are people who read the book and it's anybody. It doesn't have mm. to be a, a, a learned someone or it, it could be your librarian. It could be your neighbor. It could be anyone. You're testing the waters. You're giving them to read and write a review and give you feedback. So you can use that for many different reasons. Some people use that to go back and fix before they publish. Some use it so that on the day that they publish, they already have some reviews for people to reference, right? And that's what I did. So I went through this network called NatGalley that's used by a whole lot of uh, authors in America, I guess around the world, I'm not sure. 
it's got hundreds and thousands of reviewers. You literally oh. put your book and these people get your book. What they get in return is they get a free copy of your book, obviously. Okay. They can be anyone and they can write anything. You do not control anything and where they post it or whatever, but they always post on Goodreads and Amazon. It's a right. really good uh, resource, I think. And so I sent out to Nat Galley and I got my very first review was a two-star review. It broke my heart, right? Because it was my first review and it was terrible. Right. And I mean, and I don't, I don't think that everybody should give me five stars. I feel like you need to be honest. It's just your delivery. Exactly. It's so unkind in her delivery. So right. brutal. It's, and everyone who read it later on said to me, do you know this person? Do they have something against you? I said, no, I have no I idea. I don't even know them. They posted it at exactly midnight on May 5th. It's like they had it and they were just waiting for my book to come up. The moment my book was out, that review was out. Review number one was a terrible review. And, um, you know, she's entitled to her opinion. It's fine, but I just wish she'd been kinder. Um, you know, I cannot go nitpicking every review and analyzing, but why mm -hmm. did you say this is inaccurate? A lot of inaccuracies in that review, which is fine. Just be kind is mm -hmm. all I asked. Just, just say it wasn't your book, your type of book or whatever you want to say. It's, a, it's badly written. The grammar is poor, whatever it may be. That's not what mm -hmm. she was saying. Uh, she was pretty saying it was unbelievable. She said it was unbelievable that there are that many Zimbabweans in London because wow. the book is based in London. Yes. Uh, can we tell you as Zimbabweans now? <laughs> <laughs> How many Zimbabweans are there? But anyway, you know, yeah, I get you. Country, at least <clears throat> there can't be that many Zimbabweans in wow. London. Wow. And my sister is a Zimbabwean who lives in London and moving right. to Atlanta. So mm -hmm. that was you know, the premise of her, her review. So that's fine. But it really crushed me, like he said. And I'll tell you, it was seconds before I had an interview on ZBC. I was doing a live interview. I was going live on air and I had this review. My heart was sink it had sunk into the ground. I, and it was 12 midnight for me because I had to be up, to stay up to be live at seven o'clock in Zimbabwe. Good morning, yeah. Oh so God. it was, and my, I was on the phone with a friend of mine and she's like, you look terrible. I was all made up, ready to go on air. I was going to be live. And then I yeah. read this review and it's the first one. And I was, all my fears, everything I feared yeah. about writing, everything that I was afraid of, reception, it all was in that. It just was like, oh my gosh. And she says to me, open a glass, a bottle of wine now. Mm -hmm. Drink a glass of wine. And so take it like, easy. And now I actually get it, like where your fears came from, right? Now, now I get that part, right? Because at the end of the day, I was actually listening yesterday. I was listening to a whole lot of um, prominent people's life stories, bios, and whatever. Oh my gosh, I got to learn a lot. I didn't even realize that Lauren Hill, the famous Lauren Hill, literally got booed on stage. Booed yeah. as in, oh, she couldn't yeah. sing. You understand? But guess what? Like, who doesn't know Lauren Hill now? You understand? She never gave up on it or she never got discouraged. And she was actually young. It was a talent show, right? Yeah. Imagine when you're young, you get discouraged. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't sing. I'm not going to do this. Da, 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 da. And then you don't do it because you feel discouraged. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So when I learned that, I was like, wow, it's not about giving up. It's about believing what the, what the passion that's within you is telling you because that's your calling regardless of what Alice thinks, regardless of what whoever thinks. And like you're saying, also, I've also heard some people say, ah, that's not my type of book, right? Because I was so excited about it, right? And then I'm like, dude, now I get you. It's all right. I will read it because I'm, I love stories like that, right? And then at the same time, I love the style of how you wrote it. We, you're writing on somebody's perspective and we're, we're in their heads every chapter, right? And we're like, what gave you that um, idea to, 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 to put every chapter, be it uh, a character's perception? Um, before I answer that, I just want to say one last thing about the review. Sorry to just go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I'm sure there's a wondering, then what happened? Well, I drank a glass of wine. I yeah. went on air on Zimbabwean TV. Yeah. And I was fine. My nerves were calm, but I was worried about that review. And then next day, when I checked, all the other ARC readers, the other people I'd given books, were giving me five stars and four stars. And 
Mm. Ooh, a relief. And a relief. It's been that it's right. been that since, you know. Right. Right. So anyway, yeah, I still get nervous. Yeah. I don't check my reviews every day. I'd go crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I just check whenever, like after a while. And, I, and then after I see that people are writing reviews, I'm like, hey, people, I need those reviews. So if you've read my book, if you liked it or didn't like it, whatever your review may be, it's very important Helpful. to give me feedback. Yeah. If it's not good, if it's a one star, just be kind when you tell me. <laughs> be nice be nice i feel like like you're saying the delivery is so important because the delivery is what it sets the pace for some people how we take it (laughs) yeah yeah and someone may not read it because of your delivery and 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 it's okay but just but anyway just as a human being if someone's Mm -hmm. done some work and someone's gone out of their way and done something if it's not good just tell them in a nice way Mm -hmm. you know don't about it and don't use demeaning words and and that's 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 the bit that i'm like oh i would never do that i've read a lot of books and some books have been like oh this is not it but i would never go to an author or whoever a singer or a dancer or any performer or anything right. and say oh that's rubbish Ugh, you right. know so it's all about delivery and uh yeah so that's all i have to say write a review and, and be on that bit Right. And to people, remember, like, do unto others as you'd like them to do unto you. If just get into their shoes, you understand? Be the author for a day. Be the author author for a second or for an hour or I don't know. You understand? And then think and then write that review to yourself and see how you feel. You understand? So for me, I find, you know, like you're saying, delivery is so important because we have to be considerate about other people's feelings more than anything. And hence the reason, but then again, we live in a world where, oh yeah, I'm unapologetic for us, A, B, C, D. I am so opinionated. God help us. But you know what? You're going strong and you're doing good. And hey, guys, we're expecting part two. Hey! <laughs> Um, to everybody that's actually just tuning in right now, I am actually joined today by, by the talented author, Alice Takawiro is actually based in Atlanta, and she just recently released a book on the 5th of May entitled uh, Turning Tables, and it ends with what you, and she, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Hey! But anyway, um, you guys must actually read it. It is a must read. It's a love story, if I should put it that way. Um, but then also it is a um, interracial love story, seeing that, you know, many of us live here in the diaspora and then we get entangled in this you know, <laughs> love situations, <laughs> but it gets juicy and dramatic and all that fun stuff. But how did you come up with the juicy part? Yo, Alice, please tell us, yo, I could have put it down. And I was like, I was like, I need some tea. tea, tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have always been a very curious mind. I love drama. I love drama. I love mystery. I love thinking up drama, like I'm very that much, I'm that much that girl, right? Mm-hmm. So it came as no surprise that even though I was writing a love story, it had to have drama, right? Of course. Um, none of it was planned beforehand. I kid you not, the story was developed as I went along. Mm-hmm. I just added a character here. And as I developed each character, more ideas came through. So Mm-hmm. It was just one thing after the other. I literally was putting one foot in front of the other. And nice. this is what I have. Yeah. It's Ooh. just the way my brain was working. It, it's, I cannot explain that. But that's, that's just how it happened. Oh, look at you. Talk about talent. Well, people have different ways of being inspired or how to write, right? But how, so in that case, how long did it take you to write it? It took me three years. I started in 2018. So early 2018, around March is when I seriously was like, okay, we're typing yeah. away. Even at that, in those early days, I didn't know what I was going to do with this thing. I honestly wasn't even thinking publishing. I was just doing my usual, I have a story in my head, let's go with it. And then as it grew and grew and the characters developed and it was becoming more and more fun, even for me as the writer, I was enjoying what was going on. I took it to the next level and yeah. finished in 22. 
And you see, guys, uh, some of these things, I know a lot of people have this whole, oh, yeah, overnight success, microwave life and whatever. And this book took three years for you to write. And three years could be nothing because it's a novel. You understand? It's not just like a, a small memoir or whatever. But, you know, developing all those characters need time. And that that's quite impressive. So was there a time that you actually felt discouraged in your three years of writing this book to say, Oh, am I ever going to finish this? Well, why am I even? And if so, how did you overcome that obstacle for you to seeing that now you've published it? <clears throat> oh, discouragement all, the, like a lot of times, a lot of self-doubt, you know, mm -hmm. where you don't believe you have what it takes. You, you read it over and over again. Another thing is I've read this book every draft a thousand times over because you read a chapter, you go back, you read it, you rewrite it and rewrite it. I've discarded so many chapters the whole entire first chapter had to throw it away, had to rewrite. There was another ending and then this ending. There was the first ending, changed that all the way around and created a new ed ending. I had to add new characters to keep the story moving. And at every stage, I always felt discouraged because I felt like I wasn't qualified to be doing what I'm doing. Because like I said, I am a regular physical therapist I'm not a writer I didn't do English literature I didn't study creative writing I never did any of the artsy stuff in school or anywhere right mm -hmm. except you know literature at school mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes I didn't know if I was doing it the right way I don't know if that makes sense mm -hmm. so I just kept going all I can tell you is I kept going it was my support system which is my husband and my kids so supportive like just do it keep doing it keep going just write 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 and then when I had it finished it's like okay then you go on to the next stage so I think it was having a support structure and people sort of cheering you on that gave me confidence and um, I gave my first draft to a few of my friends to read it and they loved it it was such a terrible draft but they loved that draft so. <laughs> I hope none of the drafts had somebody dead in it it did actually it did for real um and um so <laughs> that encouraged me you know my friends would be like oh my god <clears throat> rowdy, rowdy it actually is pretty good you you're mm -hmm. on to something you're so mm -hmm. good i like how you write so all those little words they kept telling me they have no idea how powerful that was it kept mm -hmm. me going right um yeah so a lot of discouragement but it's a lot about uh your support structure and just having faith and praying i won't even lie to you i prayed and i keep praying to this day i keep praying mm -hmm. i keep praying mm -hmm. about that book i keep praying like you know for the next stage and at every stage i pray for the next and the next so i feel like mm -hmm. um a lot of divine in intervention from above mm -hmm. definitely helped Amen to that. And so even like for you to, 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 to self-publish, did you ever consider being published at all? Or wasn't yeah. that discouraging? Yo, what happened? What, yeah. I tried. Yeah. I, oh my gosh, I spent almost a year doing what we call, when you're in the publishing world, it's called querying. You query an agent. When you, when you solicit something to an agent, when you say, mm -hmm. hey, agent so and so here's my manuscript it's still a manuscript at this point can mm -hmm. you read it um they don't even read your manuscript they don't read the whole story it's like a it's like a job application you know how there's a cover letter your cover letter determine query letter yeah okay if your cover letter does not get the attention of your employer they will not even look at your resume you know it's always that first page that cover letter of whatever it is you've put in, if it's strong enough, they will flip over and then they'll read your resume. If that's good enough, they'll give you a call. And if you, you know, good enough, you get the interview. Mm -hmm. In the interview, if you pass the stage, you get the job. So yeah, it's the yeah. same thing with an agent. You send a query letter. If they like your query, they'll say, oh, send me the first three chapters, not the whole book. They want the first three chapters. Others will ask for the first 10 pages. You've wow. got to get them in those 10 pages. So it's a wrap. Yes. I was actually listening. I just started even Viola's book. Sorry to cut you off. I just started Viola's book as well. Not Viol not the book, but the sample. Right? And the okay. sample really got me saying, no, I'm going to read this book. <laughs> that, 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 that factor. So, Agents are so hard to impress. So, I mean, you've got, you know, 
there's so many of us out there with the manuscript. I'm, I'm just one of hundreds and thousands and millions of people. They get so many queries, they call them queries. So you've got to get them in those first days, in those first words or whatever. And for whatever reason, um, I sent out to more than 30, I think close to 50 agents. Yes. And you research your agent. You don't just send to everybody. You don't just, you don't send a romance query to a, 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 a fantasy. Fantasy, yeah. Agent. You don't send it to a nonfiction. Like some agents are so niche. They'll say, I do memoirs that mm -hmm. are Christian or I do mm -hmm. this. Or someone will say, I only do romance. or I don't do young adults or I just do children's books or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you've got to study that world. You've got to mm -hmm. know who you're saying it to. You've got to know who else they've represented. And mm -hmm. is, are you in that genre? Like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work. I, and that's the research I was talking about. So yeah. I researched agents, I queried, I learned how to write a query letter. I didn't know about all this stuff. Mm. And it took a lot of work, but I did. So bottom line is I got rejection after rejection after rejection um, until I was like, oh, they don't like my story. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm just still going to self-publish myself. Like, mm, yes, what happened with uh, you guys? <laughs> so my husband said to me, look, uh, everybody will tell you this about how J.K. Rowling hearing uh, mm -hmm. 100 or is it 80 agents before she got mm -hmm. accepted. Absolutely. They didn't like the story about Harry Potter. Like they thought it was ridiculous. It just took one agent to to get the deal done. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I'm sure you have lots of those kind of stories, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So the question for me was how long was I willing to be in what they call the query trenches before mm -hmm. I got my yes? And yeah. I just found I was becoming a little impatient. Maybe I became impatient and I just felt like it was three years. I felt like, look, this story is getting old. I've, I've, I've written this. It's been three years. I've, I, I, I felt like I just, I wanted to get it out. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. My husband said, look, then do it yourself. Yeah. Just go ahead and self-publish. It's not the most, it's not the easiest way. It's not mm -hmm. the recommended way. Um, in fact, a lot of self-published authors never get heard of ever again. And all of that stuff. There's a lot of stuff that, yes, it's, it's, not, it's not the easy way to go. It's better when you have a traditional publisher backing you. You have credibility. Yeah. You have a marketing team. Mm -hmm. You have a big budget. Your, you know, your work can be seen in bigger and higher places. Mm -hmm. it's, it's much better that way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe I got impatient, uh, maybe I should have waited, but guess what? To be very honest with you and honest to God, I am happy to have self-published because I wouldn't have learned everything I've learned because I had to do everything myself. When I say from designing the book cover to figuring out copyrights, to getting my editors, to doing getting the trailer. Paper, yes. Every single thing was just me and my husband. There was, there was no big anybody behind us. It was just us, literally me sitting behind my computer and saying, okay, this is what I'm doing next. What do I need next? Where do I need to go? I, 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 I have a lot of satisfaction in having learned and gone through that journey because I had to do yeah. it myself. Mm -hmm. I do not hand a manuscript to someone and then they take it somewhere and make it a book. I, I had to do all of that. I had to literally publish it myself on Amazon and put it on there and learn how to do all that. And, and so it's a work of love. It's, and for me, I just, I'm, I, I enjoy the art. I enjoy the process. And now I'm just praying that <laughs> people love my story. I, I just pray that they love it and that they enjoy it as much as I do. So we yeah. love it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You know, if I didn't have, Right now, I have so many. You see, my eye is red, lack of sleep, trying to catch up with my sleep. But if I could, if the time was there, I would have just like, guys, round two, let's do this. <laughs> right. But no, definitely, we love it. I love it. I'm speaking for myself. And it was really a good story. And I guess maybe for me, like you're saying, with other people that you who've actually reviewed the book, that it was so relatable right in as much as i have never dated a white guy right but then there's some things like you're saying some were picked from other people's situations your situation whatever and then you're like oh my gosh they're so legit i wish people knew 
oh my god this is so legit thank god somebody understands somebody literally wrote this oh my gosh i get that <laughs> right so that was so 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 phenomenal so um, how what is your favorite way to unwind on you know such a busy day let's say when you were writing i guess maybe it's being with your family and your kids but then now you have to check like sometimes the reviews okay what's the next step are we doing the next book are we doing this and then there's a time where you're like you know what i just need to unwind how do you do that i have my little corner on the couch yeah. it's called mommy's corner <laughs> so, i like that but there summer winter spring, fall, you name it. Yeah. We have a little blanket. Uh, it's, it's, com- it's a comfort thing, you know, even okay. when it's blazing hot outside. Right. We have AC, right? But I will have my blanket. So I've got my little blankie. I have my little corner. I Which reminds me of my Ita studying room, but okay, I'm just saying. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> she had a corner. Oh my God, she did. Listen, I'm just listen. saying where all the drama started. This is where all the drama started. I, I kid you not. You just brought that up to me. That my So it was in my subconscious. You see what I'm saying? That when I'm writing, it's from my... It, yeah. some, it, you just... There, you nailed it. Maita had a little corner in the study. Yeah. And she curl up in that corner and that's where she liked to relax and unwind yeah. right yeah well i have a little couch yeah so you know, but if, and, if, and if I, anything I, to alice that is where the drama started literally when maita was yeah. in there and then chris decides okay exactly <laughs> <laughs> interesting yes, yes absolutely so you see how the writing is informed by whatever i've gone through i didn't even realize that my little corner and all that i wrote it in my book without even thinking about it I there you go <laughs> there you go that's how i unwind and i binge watch t- um um dramas on tv i don't watch funny enough i don't watch regular tv i don't watch like abc nbc cbc yeah, or any same I don't yeah. commercials. if it's got commercials i don't want to know it can so, be bothered everything yes i stream apple tv i stream uh netflix and whatever else i'm streaming yeah. so yeah. I, I just binge watch TV and of course I always have a glass of wine. Wine? <laughs> I know, why not? Like, why not, right? It's red, it is red, why not? You cannot go wrong with red wine. Oh, this oh, is so, yeah. He's probably on the other end of the couch, but sleeping. Like mm-hmm. we start watching something together mm-hmm. and 10 minutes into this thing, I'm like, yes. oh wait, what, look. It's gone. It's gone. Okay, okay, whatever. But but that's how we unwind me and him. We're just not really just home buddies. Right. Oh dear. Uh, before my last two questions, I just remembered something. You've been traveling, my dear. You've been on spaces. You've been with the book and stuff like that. How has it been? Like you know, mind expressing your excitement, your overwhelmment, your everything. Right. How it's how it is did you see this coming you know how getting all these interviews getting um you know, even traveling to europe for it even traveling to canada oh, guys she's coming to canada just so you know she's coming to canada so more details about that live and exclusive right here on tough love giggles baby with your host the hype lady so we had to just throw it out there i'm like nah <laughs> She's coming, guys. She is coming. So please uh, do tell us your, express your excitement of a woman or however way it's making I, you feel, yo. I, first of all, I'm just grateful to be in this space because like we talked about when I started writing, number one, I didn't know that I was going to go to the publishing route at all. I was just writing. Number two, I doubted myself. Is anybody going to like this? Da, 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 da. So now may june july three months later since i published this book three months later i have this overwhelming response of we love the book a lot of support a lot of interest and i'm being hosted by my friends and invited to these places where i can talk about my book and oh my gosh i love 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 meeting the readers face to face it is so much fun i just I, I cannot tell you the energy in those rooms where people are asking me questions and we're talking and laughing and 
I love it. And then we do book signings and all of that. It's amazing. I mm -hmm. did not expect it. I am enjoying it. I once said to a friend of mine, uh, you know what? Whatever happens with this book, as long as I enjoy the ride, I'm just here mm -hmm. for the ride. I'm here to have fun with it. It's a little work of love. It's my artistic expression. And wherever it goes, however far it goes, as long as I can sit back one day and say, I wrote that book and I had so much fun doing it. That's nice. it. That's so, exactly yeah. what you want. Yeah. So for those, for my Canadian people, do you mind uh, letting them know, do we, do we now have dates? Do we now have... We have Saturday? a provisional date of okay. October 15th, okay. which is a Saturday in mm -hmm. London, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Details to come, but I will be in uh, London, Ontario, uh, talking about the book. We can talk about anything. You can ask me any questions. We'll have books to buy and sign. So if you want a signed copy, so even if you've already bought like uh, your own signed copy, you can bring it over and I can sign it. Or if you bought an ebook, a lot of people did this. They bought the ebook because mm -hmm. they just wait to You're read right. it. Yeah. But they want a signed copy. So they'll come to the event and purchase a signed copy. So okay. I'll, I will have some copies available. We'll talk about the book. We'll have fun with it. It's mm -hmm. just um, a meet and greet and uh, take lots of pictures and just, and just enjoy it. Just, and yeah. before I have that one, I have one in New Jersey in September. So I will oh. be in the state area for those in new jersey and new york area delaware and philly mm -hmm. uh, it will be in new jersey again details to follow um mm -hmm. and it's going to be uh combined with another author mm -hmm. will you know details of that will come but so i'll do new jersey in september october is um Canada. london ontario ontario okay london, that is so Awesome, yo, guys. She's already touring. Talk about God's favor, yo. This is favor. Like the fact that you didn't expect to 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 be where you are right now with the book. I'm like, nah. This is favor, and this is how it was meant to be, and it is going accordingly, really. And we cannot wait for more because I believe the fact that this is just opening up. You know, there's more to come more than anything that Tessa, you don't know, I don't know, but the most high is the only one that knows because he knew knew us before we were in the right. Room, right? So we will look forward to more of the exciting news and information on how the book is going to go before we get into the second book or before you release the second book or before you write the second book. Or maybe you're already writing the second book, but we just pray can for I, that one. Can I add for my yeah. Zimbabwean and South African <clears throat> audience um i am literally in the process of getting the book published and distributed for south africa and zimbabwe so okay hopefully fingers crossed by the end of august i should have the book available in bookstores in okay. uh, south africa and at folio bookstore in borodal in zimbabwe okay. Okay. so for um you know our zimbabwean and south african readers and god willing um, if that goes well, obviously, I can extend to other parts of Africa and okay. just make it possible because uh, most of my readers in Africa, unfortunately, cannot download from Amazon or ship mm -hmm. from Amazon. They need to get into a bookstore to buy it. And mm -hmm. I am working on that. So that is definitely coming. And to those who don't read books, I am working on my audio book. I have already <laughs> Oh, Chris, I'm talking to. Right. I think this guy is Chris. He is like the guy. And really? I have Maita, one who is Zimbabwean. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, we're still, we're still in the process. And I'm still right. looking for an eye, you know, because okay. the audio book is going to have the three characters. It's oh, not nice. going to be one person in the whole book. Right. Yeah more challenging but everybody's told me they want the different voices of course book. of course the same way we were picturing every chapter you know is exactly this is actually different you know having all the characters in then you're like oh gosh I this sounds this way oh cool <laughs> right so this will actually be so interesting <laughs> right now as we speak so it, you know the writing part is one part it's everything that comes after I, it right. keeps me easy every single day yeah. every day i'm working on something to do with the book so far so and I, i'm really loving it it's fun Yay. 
that is so exciting. And so what advice would you get? What advice do you have now, you as Alice, that you wish somebody had given you before you even began, say maybe uni, uni, you know, to say, okay, maybe there was no need for you to go to uni or I don't know, what advice do you have now? Or just life advice life advice before we get to the book before you even start writing as an author um something hmm i don't know i uh what do i think someone could have told me or that you know now that you yeah that you wish someone could have given you before yeah with regards to the book or just in general in general like, first like a life lesson like life lesson I wish that, let's see, uh, oh dear, there's so many, what, mm. you've really caught me on this one, I'm trying to think, <laughs> it's perfect, and I have, yeah. by no means, everything right all the time, um, I wish that, <laughs> um, let me see, I, maybe if someone had told me that, um, when you, I guess, you know, when you first come out here as an immigrant, there are certain things that you learn later on. Like maybe I should have, oh my God, what could I have done? Oh dear, I really can't. <laughs> okay, so in regards to the book then, in regards to the book, let's see how easy that would be. Let's see. Okay, yeah, because life lessons. <laughs> I, 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 I have, I'm not perfect. I have tons. But I, at this moment, my brain yeah. literally Rose, right you know. yeah yeah <laughs> catching you uh, off guard you know sorry about that something, something which may sound very i don't know to some people but uh i wish that maybe um uh, i wish maybe i could have uh um started my family earlier sometimes i wish oh i have friends whose kids are like in high school they're done and I have like <laughs> that's so, exactly my life lesson too I wish I right? I'm like I'm still talking about yeah. uh grade math and and, right. and 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 all this stuff and some people's kids are off to college must be nice right and now they're but, thinking of traveling and and, and then you with you, no you, you, you yeah your time is your time right but guess what though that said I love where I am with it and you know what my husband said to me when I brought that up to him I was like I said you know what I wish we'd met earlier I'd gotten married earlier mm -hmm. I had then he goes but if we'd done everything earlier we wouldn't we have, been, have not to been together the life mm -hmm. that we have even now because right now. We, we would have been struggling students together mm -hmm. maybe with kids and now we would our kids would not have what they have now mm -hmm. because yeah. back then we were all still struggling to come up right I believe so, that too everything is where it's supposed to be and i believe it and i love this stage but yeah, yeah one of those things that just pops <laughs> in my head <laughs> oh yeah that's actually a, a life lesson that i i wish to but also like you're saying it's one of those i would look on the brighter side you understand like yeah. i at least would i am setting an empire for my kids and exactly. <laughs> maybe i would have been successful in doing other things because i'd be so hung down because yeah having kids such mm. a responsibility it's a, it's maybe hard. i wouldn't have been through grad school maybe i mm. wouldn't have uh had the luxury to do so many things that i did then that allow mm. me to live the life that i have now no. so everything happens in this time but that was a good one you got me on that one i had to <laughs> 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 no that is awesome and that's a good response too and last but not least do you mind sharing with the listeners your social handles and where they can buy the book i know most of you've been mentioning amazon a lot but how about do you have some in the bookstores already or it's still just online okay so my instagram is alice.takawira.writes that's instagram facebook is at Alice Takawira writes, no dots there. Uh, and Twitter is Rudo Tax, uh, R U D O T A K S. That's my Twitter handle. Um, where can you find the book? Oh, and my website. So mm -hmm. I would say to you, my one stop shop is the website yeah. www.alicetakawira.com. 
just my name.com. On my website, you see my book trailer that I am so proud of. Oh, that we love so much. <laughs> book, my bio, everything, and links to where you can buy the book. So the book is available on Amazon. You can download it to your Kindle. You can uh, order a physical copy on Amazon.com or .uk or .au. If you're in the Western world, it will be shipped to you if you're in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, anywhere in Europe. You order it on Amazon, it will be shipped to you. Uh, Barnes & Noble, if you're in America, Barnes & Noble online. Apple Books, if you're anywhere in the world and you have an iPhone or an iPad or Apple, anything, download the iBooks app. You can find my book. You can download it onto any device. Um, and several other online stores. There's like multiple little online stores that do sell books. Um, you just have to go on my website. There's a link that will take you to all of those stores and you can yeah. order from there. I just named the bigger, the bigger stores. The okay. book is not available in stores because as a self-published author, it is extremely difficult to get your book listed in a bookstore. So that's another, it's a challenge here in America, but um, when you go to other parts of the world, it is not that much of a challenge. So that's why my book will be available in bookstores in South Africa and Zimbabwe very soon. Wow. 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 We are so proud of you. And I am so excited for more to come. Uh, you heard it for yourselves, guys. Uh, the one-stop shop to go to is www.alistakawira.com. And then you'll get all the links from there. But still, if you find one, one link that's... Um, that's already there that you have, say, maybe a social handle, Instagram, whatever, and you'd like to get a hold of Alice, feel free to DM her, guys. As soon as I'm going to DM us now, we're going to go to the next one. And I'm going to go to the next one. Follow me on my Instagram. You can keep up with all the, the book tours that we're mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. Uh, so coming to New Jersey, going mm -hmm. to, uh, um, on, uh, to Ontario, to London, mm -hmm. Ontario possibly vegas that is what? another possibility that is floating around and then i've been be. invited to zimbabwe and south africa yeah. for uh, book launches and stuff like that okay. but as you can imagine you know i still have a day job and mm. kids and stuff, so right. i have to schedule those very carefully so some yeah. of them will be spread out maybe into towards the end of the year maybe okay. even in, a little bit into next year as well just depending on what's going on so right. follow me on Instagram and you get all the news. Yay! Thank you so much, Alice, um, for making time out of your extremely busy schedule. And we meant to have this interview in May. <laughs> but then I oh, hadn't my. finished reading my book. And that's number one. Number two, we had the tools and whatever and yada, yada, yada. And then we're like, okay, we'll wait till you get back from Europe and all that fun stuff. And here we are, and we truly, truly appreciate your, your work, and we celebrate you all the way. We cannot wait for more to come, and any last words to your um, readers or to our listeners here? Uh, first of all, I would just like to thank anyone who has read my book, liked my link, done anything that is just a vote of confidence. There are some people who haven't read it, but have already started talking about it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for that support and for believing in this book yeah. that I am so proud of. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, do you mind putting it like right here on screen? Because I don't have my iPad. Unfortunately, the copy I have is a proof copy that I had um, before, you know, okay. it says not for you that see that, but right. this is pretty yeah. much yeah. the book. Um, no, we just I like all this thing in a jig. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's so great. yes, a big, big thank you to everyone who's been supportive, continues to support, even those that just spread the word, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm very grateful. I don't take anything for granted, even that little, a little whatever, follow, mm -hmm. well done, anything. So mm -hmm. thank you. I'm very grateful. And uh, to anyone who's out there thinking about writing, it may not even be writing. It could be anything. It could be whatever your dream is, whatever you've been aspiring to do, whatever you feel is inside you and you need to let it out, I say, go for it. I say, just bring it out, believe in yourself, pray about it, uh, if you pray, and um, just go for it. Go for it do and it. see what it takes. 
way it takes you. So that's, the, yeah, that's all I say. And the, just to add on to what you just said, don't think about the how. Just do what you need to do. Don't yeah. think about the how. Even with you, you didn't know whether or not you were going to publish this. And right now, whoever thought we we're going to be having book tours, don't worry about the how. You just play your part and God will do the rest. So we truly appreciate your advice, um, Alice, and we look forward to more. And thank you so much for your time. You take care. We say adios. <laughs> So much i appreciate this platform and oh my gosh you give me so much energy i wish i had <laughs> energy seriously i'm out here thinking i need more whatever what is it you eat yeah. drink or whatever like i need some of that right and i um, wish i could tell you like i'm telling you right now i am functioning on i don't know how many minutes of sleep let me not say minutes i'm kidding I have a couple of hours of sleep and you're right now. And I also need to study. I need to go to the gym for my mental health. I need to have dinner. I need to reply to emails. I need to send invoices. Oh. I need to, and I'm like, God help me. But then sometimes I really, I'm like, how did I do this? I right. don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just go for it. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you after five radio. I think what you're doing is amazing. Giving a platform to people like me who otherwise like, you know, was going to hear where were we going to go like we have this space where we can mm -hmm. come and reach out to a wider audience so i am thankful thank you thank you